We thank Hashem that we're able to learn every day. That's the of our learning. We should have the base of Megdash immediately. Start Yutas Amad Bez Tanar Abanan. Yeah, ten lines from the bottom. It's taught in a brisa. Tanar Abanan is officially an important brisa. It's the uh, one that was edited by Chien um, Rabbeisha. So. It says Shnayim Chasumim Alashtar Umesu. Two people signed on a document. Two witnesses. And they they passed away. Both Shnayim and Ashok Vamru. Two other people came and they said Yadana Shiksav Yadamu. We recognize the, the signatures. Avlanusim Hayu Ktan Mayu Psulay Edusayu. But they add in that they were either forced to, 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 to sign, they must have had some information about this, uh, this exact event, or at that time they were children, they were minors, or they were puzzled. And they said that they were related somehow, or maybe that they uh, gambled or something, something that would make them puzzle. Well, these second set of witnesses are believed. Why are they believed? Because we don't know that this document is good anyway. The only way we know that it's good is based on their testimony. And their testimony includes in it that, that it's not good. So it's like a peshas or a peshit. They're telling you that, uh, that it's their signature. It could be it's not even their signature. We don't even know. It could be the whole thing is forged. They're telling us that it's not a forge, forgery. But they're telling us there's something else that we believe in. If we say, if we have other witnesses, or that uh, uh, other witnesses testifying that this is the correct, this is the accurate signature. This is the real. Um, this these this is the signature of this person. And oh, another option, or they have a document that has the signature on it. Mr. Shikarla Vera. It's interesting that if if a document was contested once, and then it was proved that it's valid. That's better than a document that was never contested. Because once it's contested, then they had to analyze it. And now, now we know that it's for sure good. So, and it was established. So if I can then compare signatures, I look at the, at the document that was contested and then, ver and then uh, verified. And I compare that signature to the one that's being ta the, taken out today to be used. So then I don't need these witnesses that just showed up because I have this comparison from another document of the, of the validity of those signatures. So then I don't trust these witnesses when they say that they were Pasal or, or Ketanim or Anusim. Okay. It says, Einemanim, Einelunemanim, then you don't trust them. The Gemara now asks, okay, so what does it mean you don't trust them? What happens? What does it mean you don't trust them? So I have a document here that says uh, Ruvain lent money to Shimon. Shimon owes, uh, owes, uh, owes Ruvain now $100. Well, on that uh, document, there were, there were signatures. Those signatures I just verified with another document. So we know that it's good. Problem is, is that um, we have two witnesses that are coming along and saying that they're that those witnesses were children, or they're puzzle. Or they're, so how does it work? What does the Gemara ask? So now you just collect with it as if it's a perfectly good star. I have two against two. I have the witnesses in the document that are saying, uh, 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 assumption, that they're saying that we're kosher, and this event took place, and here we are signed, and we have two witnesses that showed up later that said that they're puzzle. Amarav Sheshus, I see Meras. Sheshus says from this, Hakasha Tchilas Hazami. You see, there's a question about Hazama. Hazama means, what is it? Plotting. Yeah, to plot. So to conspire. So um, Hazama is when two witnesses show up and they say, they testify about a certain event. 
And then another two witnesses come later and they say, how could you have testified about that? You weren't even there. You were with us somewhere else. So the rule is that we believe the second set of witnesses. But let's say the second set of witnesses didn't say that. Let's say the second set of witnesses, it's totally not true. That never happened. Then another group of witnesses come and say, no, you were with us. So now I have two things here. First of all, I had a hakasha, the contra contradictory witnesses. And then I have a um, So I, have, I could say, I could learn this in two ways, and it's actually a machlekes. Do I say that because it was a contradiction, there's no more testimony here at all? The witnesses are now, both of them are invalid because they contradicted each other. Both, and now you're coming along and you're saying, Hazama, that you were with us. So there's no witnesses here even to say you were with us because they both invalidate. Or the other way is saying that, no, the contradiction was the beginning of the, of the, of the, of the, of making them Zaymimim. And it's all considered one thing. And you can still make them Zaymimim even though they were contradicted already. So Rav Sheshis holds, Hakasha Tchila Sazama. It's all one thing. The Hakasha Nazama uh, is all um, one continuation. If that's the case, then they have to be treated similar regarding the other rules. Now, what is the rule about Hakasha? What is, about Hazama? That you can only do Hazama, you can only, uh, you, you see, there's a Chiddush over here that I believe the second set of witnesses, even though they're not any stronger than the first set of witnesses. First set of witnesses say uh, Ruvain killed Shimon or something. Um, second set of witnesses say, how do, how do you know that? You were with us. You don't, you don't know that. Now, of course, the first set of witnesses says that they do know it. So there's, the, why is one stronger than the other? But that's the rule from the Torah that, that we believe the second set of witnesses. Now, what we're saying is that that rule only works if those first set of, set of witnesses is, is there when they're saying that. They have to say it in front of them. If that's the case, so... In front of the ones that they're that they're saying are liars. So if that's the case, so the same thing with Hakasha. What happens? We don't consider it Hakasha. Hakasha means contradictory uh, testimony um, to invalidate everything here, because we just have one big contradiction. If the first set of witnesses isn't even here. And in this case, the first set of witnesses had died. Second set of witnesses is claiming that they're apostle, but we don't consider that tray or tray, that it's uh, two against two. We view it as the same rules as, as Hazama, and because they're not here, we can't testify about it. Yeah. I'm a layer of Nachman. So, so this whole discussion, this whole pressure could never occur? Because this whole rice is based on the fact that the two witnesses on the star are dead. No, one second, one second. The question went like this. We have a, a document. We don't need the witnesses to be alive for this document to be valid. But we do have another set of witnesses that came and said that these, the first set of witnesses are not valid. So for that, in order to make it that they, in, that they cancel each other out and the whole document becomes worthless, that I would need that first set of witnesses to be there. Because they're not there, then the second set of witnesses can't just say that they're invalid. It's, it's, it's a it's a tray or tray. It's two against two. And I can only I can only invalidate the witnesses if they're in front of me. I, so in other words, I don't view it as a tray or tray, as a two two against two because I need to have the, the rules of Hazama there. Okay, um, what in the end happens? Yeah, no, well, it's, yeah, it's, it's Akasha, because they're testifying, you're right. You're right. You're right. I think we're viewing it as if they're saying that they're valid, the fact that they're signing on it. Yeah. 
that's the, that's probably the logic of that Hazaman needs to be in front of them. Yeah. So Rav Nachman says back to Rav Sheshis, what would come out from Rav Sheshis? That we're going to use this document that the witnesses had died and other witnesses are contesting their vote. They're, they're saying that they're not valid. The, the, those witnesses, we're going to still use the document. So Rav Nachman says, one second, how can you use this document? Ilu Habakaman, let's say they were alive, the first set of witnesses. And we would contradict them. Say no, it, it never happened, or you're or you're not, you're invalid, or whatever it was. We would say that we can't use this document anymore because it's two against two: the witnesses of the document and the other two witnesses. And we wouldn't look at this document. We wouldn't collect the debt. Let's say it's a debt. Ruven uh, lent and money. The document uh, attests to that. We wouldn't say you can collect the debt because we have two witnesses that say the do document's not valid. Now these witnesses aren't here. Okay, now that they're not here, I have one more option. Let's say they would have been here. Maybe they would admit. I have two problems. First of all, they're contradicted. So that's itself we shouldn't use. Now I have one more thing. Maybe they even maybe they would have even agreed that it wasn't true. Mehemni, now you're going to use document. You're going to use a document that it could be that the people that signed in it would have admitted that it wasn't true. So Ella Marav Nachman, Rav Nachman says, Uki Trey Lahadi Trey, Vukimanim Pescus Mari. Right. Right. That's what we're saying. But Rav Sheshis didn't want to say that they canceled each other. He says the document is still valid. Rav Nachman says, no, not only. Is it that they're that they contradicted each other? But because they're not here, we don't even know if they would have admitted, which makes it more of a reason not to use the document. So Reb Nachman saying you should not be allowed to use the document. Reb Nachman says so. Therefore, they cancel each other out. We have to leave the money wherever it is. Leave the the property wherever it is. You can't extract money on the document that's been contested. It's, okay. Rashi adds in here. Let's say the document was a sale. So we would say that the, the, the land needs to stay by the seller. However, if it's in, in the hands of the buyer already, then we would stay in the hands of the buyer. So what does he mean? It's it's going to be whoever's uh, whoever's possession. Yeah, but that's what that, that's really what we're dealing with that when we do have another source of their signature. So if if we don't have another source of the signature, except for these witnesses, then we would definitely believe the witnesses. But now we're saying that we do have another source. We have another... Uh, Bryce has said... Inamanum means that the document it becomes good. It doesn't mean that it's really good. It means that you don't tear up the document. Okay. Midi the Havi Anixi the Barshatya. This is exactly how it was by the property of a fellow Barshatya. Now Barshatya is probably not a name. Barshatya is a person that was a shaita, a, an imbecile. The um it turns out this one, this fellow, um, he had moments of sanity and then moments of insanity. So so, um, yeah, you had to know what was going on. This gets complicated. When he sold it, when he bought it, when it this, every, the whole thing is a confusion because in order for a sale to be, uh, to be effective, he has to have, he has to be in the right state of mind. Otherwise, you'd say, well, I was, I didn't know what I was doing then. Yeah, something like that. That's, what we, yeah, we would have the term for it today. 
So, um, the Bashatia Zavin Nechse. Zavin means he sold. I, I don't know how to tell the difference between Zavin and Zavin. Zavin, Zavan, so bought, sold. So, um, he, he, he sold the property. Also, Betray. Amri, they said, Kishu Shaita Zavin. He sold it when he was a Shaita. That's what two people came along and said. When he was uh, an, uh, he, he was uh, insane when he sold it. Okay, if that's the case, then there's no sale, right? Also, Betray, Amri, Kishu Chalam Zavin. However, another two witnesses came and says, Oh, no, he was perfectly sane at that time. Amaravashi, a lot of times, um, this uh, the doctors probably know this uh, the, the, that around yomtiv time for some reason like towards the end of yomtiv you see people like sometimes there's like medications that they're not taking and different things you hear like crazy things at the end and only at the end of yomtiv like the last days it's like wearing off everything so it was before yomtiv it was after yomtiv only the seller that could be insane or not the buyer right? oh no actually the buyer also but that wasn't our case yet yeah so I'm a Ravashi. Uki tre la hadi tre, uki menem becheskos parshatia. Ravashi says, we'll have to cancel everyone out. And um, two witnesses saying that he's saying, two witnesses saying that he's not saying. So basically, we don't know anything here. And so the property has to stay in the possession of the original owner, which was the, the person that's um, sometimes yes, sometimes no. We would only say this if we know that the property was his also. How was it his? Well, it belonged to his father. That's a different story. However, right? we would say that he bought it when he was here. It's easy to, to see because Zavin means to sell and Zavan means to buy. Yeah. It doesn't always have that. But. Yeah, I put this over here, so it's Zabain. Zabain, oh, even better, fancy. <laughs> Which uh, um, print was that? Oh, Steins. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, we can be sure that he did his research. In the yeshiva, they don't know what the vowels are. Yeshiva, everything is. They, they guess it. Zabain. Zabain. Uh huh. Oh, no. So the first one is Zavan. Zavan. Zivan. So when he was a Shaita, he... Zivan. He bought it. And Kshushaita Zabain. When he was a Shaita, it was an imbecile or, uh, or uh, insane. That's when, he, that's when he sold it. So we don't even have... We don't even have a Chazaka that it's his. That's the problem. So if he inherited it, then we say that it's his, and we'll put it into his. his uh, we'll we'll establish it that it's by him until someone can prove that he sold it. But if he also bought it, then we don't really have. I mean, we don't have the original owner coming and claiming anything here, either. So why would we? I mean, it's more his than than the next guy. I'm not sure why. Um, See, this is an interesting thing. We're not. We're talking about property here. We're not. We're actually taking the purchaser out of the property, and we're putting the barshatia back in the property. If it would be metalpol, and Tysus spells this out, if it would be movable objects, um, you know, what is it called? Personality. Personality. So then, it would be whoever had possession of it then but because it's realty so then you don't really have it under your possession it's just a title that exists somewhere that the the the, the realty exists it's in it's like like cocaine and exelis there's a rule in the Gemara that land can't be stolen what that means is that is that it never changes ownership so i happen to be there's someone there's a squatter that's living there but it doesn't mean that He's taken really possession of it. It's still the title somewhere that, that that says that it's his, but wherever the owner is, it's still his. So, so um, we're saying here is that the Barshatia 
goes back into that property. I, there was someone that had purchased it and makes believe he's the owner, but that's not real a real ownership here because he never really had it. Uh huh. So if somebody doesn't own the property, it's, it's making believe he's the owner. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm a Rabbi Vo. Rabbi Vo says, "Ain mezim nasei de mela b'fneim." Hmm. I think we knew that, right? That Hazama needs to be Hazama is when the second set of witnesses says you were with us. That has to be in front of the first set of witnesses. That we knew, that, that we didn't have a machlaikas about. However, but you are allowed to contradict them even if they're not here. That is he's clearly arguing on Rav Sheshis. Rav Sheshis said that Hakasha has to be the contradiction also has to be in front of the witnesses. Okay, Vahazama Shlebifneyam, when you do the Hazama not in front of them, which we said was nothing, right? It turns out it's not really nothing. We can't say that it's Hazama that we act, act, that we that we fully believe the second set of witnesses, which that's the rule by Hazama. Hazama was when the second set of witnesses says, tells the first set, how could you say that you were with us somewhere else? So we believe that second set of witnesses. So although we don't believe them here because the first set of witnesses wasn't here, but we still consider them hakasha, which Rabbi Vo allows, hakasha not in front of them, which makes it a tray tray, which doesn't puzzle. I don't think it puzzles the first set of witnesses. Hazama makes them puzzle leidus. Tray tray, we just, we don't know, right? So there are some halachas here that would say, even though this case, we're not going to uh, uh, we're not going to trust them in this case, but it doesn't mean that anything about them. When did they get the, the punishment of what they wanted to do? Yeah, that's by Hazama. That happens right then by the same by the same. Thing, if they're, they're yeah, separate. Right. I think that would no. That sounds like it's enough. Imanoa Yisem, you were with us. You could not have. So then there's a rule that they get whatever punishment. They that were happens, that the happens then. I think so. Then they're also become like they become like Bali Zinim at the same time. Right. They, that's why they can do that. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually why it says um we actually learn it from an ox. But who had Bibalov? We say Yavi Bala Shar Vyamad al Shari. That that means that they need to be there. The owner needs to be there. Here it's the owner of themselves. They need to be there when the judgments. Yeah, very good. Okay, Amar Mar. Master taught. That's uh, when we say the master taught. We're going back to discuss a Tanayak source, the Mishnah Brisa. In this case, it looks like it's our Mishnah. Usually, when it quotes our Mishnah, it would just put two dots, you know, and then it would say like a new quote. Anyway, it says, <laughs> "You said that we trust witnesses that are testifying to a signature." to then add in that although this is their signature, but they were not valid witnesses. Because how do we know that it's their signature in the first place? Only through them. So therefore they have the right to, to they believe to add in that extra state. But let's say we know that it's the correct signature from another document. Then these witnesses show up and say it's their signature. We say, we don't need you to tell us it's a signature that we know. You're claiming that they're invalid, that um, we don't trust you. Okay. So the issue was because, the at least according to Rav because they weren't in front of them. The Gemara says, uh, uh, what other document were you using to, to establish the signatures? It said, Kara Lavir in, like Kara Lavir like. It needed to be a document that was contested once, which makes sense. Messiah Leila Rabasi, Dem Rabasi, Aim Makaimina Sashtail, Mishtash Kara Lavir, Vachsik Bebezdin. 
someone, if it, this document was never contested, he could make up another two documents. Same way he made, we, we think he made up one document and he's now he's showing up with another document or another two or whatever. We'll say, okay, he made them all up, That's, right? So it needs to be a document that was verified once. Why would we have verified a document? Well, someone said that it wasn't true. Then we had to, to find witnesses and, uh, and to establish that it is true. So now we have one document here that at least this one was established. Now we can compare signatures. Amri Nardoi said in Nardoi. Remember who Nardoi is? Do I have your paper? No, I, it was in my Yavamas. Uh, there are lots of places where you can find his signature or Yeah. 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 Now you have a problem. Like you're saying, you're, you're, uh, Reb Naftali is suggesting that, uh, that if it's a document, you know, that has monetary significance, so maybe it was forged. But the letter that he wrote to his sister uh, with his signature on it, why would he have forged that? Uh, I mean, that we can find something like that. The only thing is, is that sometimes those things, uh, we don't consider them the same sort of signing on those documents. It depends on the source. Where you get that document, you're not going to get it if it's produced by someone who's going to benefit from the yeah. city. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. It also could be planted. Is it verifying the signature or we're verifying the contents? Signature. Signature, right? Yeah. Right. Well, there's a document that, that that's attesting to some money uh, that someone owes someone or to a sale or something like that. And we don't know that the signatures are, are correct on the document. Right. Right. That's, that's exactly what we're discussing. We're discussing a, a, a document that wasn't notarized and how to get it notarized um, by using either another document or in comparing the signature or to have witnesses say that we, we know that this is the person's signature, maybe they signed in front of us or something, but we know that it was the signature. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's a whole discussion in the, in the Gemara if, if every document needs to be notarized. Well, it really has to do with if someone shows up with the document, do we say we don't believe it until you notarize it? Or do we say, yeah, until someone's going to claim that it's not valid, um, we're going to consider it valid. That's a discussion. In the, it's not so simple. Yeah, right? If, if you can kind of mezuyev, if, if we wait for the time of mezuyev to say mezuyev is, it was forged, or if it's automatically, it will show me that it's Unless the person admits, then you say admits that. Okay, but if the person would say, I don't know, so then would we claim that? It's an interesting thing. Well, um, um, Nardoi says, Ein mistake subis. You need two documents, two ksubas. Does a ksuba over here mean a real uh, ksuba or does it mean just a document? Sounds like a ksuba. Aksuba. Okay. Yeah, you would need signatures from Aksuba. That that would work. Um, or two sale documents of fields. Now, however, those sale documents of fields have to be they have to be that it's actually a sale that we know what took place and the owners have lived on that property for three years and it wasn't contested. Otherwise, we, you just bring me another questionable document. So it has to be a document that's uh, that's upheld, you know. The, the source of the document, Ibn Naftali, is also important. It has to come from someone else. He can't come from, from himself. He can't be the one producing that other document. Umar says, what are you worried about? If the document, the Gemara thinks like this, 
how did how did he forge the document? He think we think he forged the document because he has another document with the signature, and he traced it. So how did he get the signature on this document? Because he traced it off another document. So now he produces the first document. Uh, he produces the document, the forged document. And then he says, I'll prove it to you. That's the signatures. Here, look, I have another document. So we say that's not good because he's the one that's, we, we think he forged the, for the, the first one. So, so if someone else has the document, then we say, okay, that's fine. Gemara says, but maybe he looked at the document, went home and forged and, and forged the signature. And now he tells the other guy, show them your document. Meanwhile, he's the one that uh, that forged it off that. So the Gemara says, well, that's not what we're really concerned about. Because Kuli Haile Matsu He wouldn't have been able to go back home and to copy the signature without it in front of him. So it's only because he has he is the owner of the other document that we say that he was able to forge the next document. But if someone else had that document, we say we wouldn't have been able to forge it. He has a document he's trying to prove right now. He has one document in his hand. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We don't know if those signatures are 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 accurate. But so, curious if he has another one. He has a signature right here. Yeah. Now this signature right here, we believe is forged. Okay. So we get another document that's accurate. We know that it was accurate. How do we know it was contested or whatever? And then that document is going to be valid. And that, that document is going to be used to show that the signatures are the same, to verify the first one. Now, if he was the owner of that verified document, so then we think that maybe he forged the second one because he had it in his house, he was able to trace it. So he should he can't be the owner of that first document. But if someone else is the owner, we said, that's fine. So we said, but maybe he traced it off the other guys. So we say, no, he wouldn't have been able to trace it. He maybe looked at it, but then to go back home and then to copy it, that one he wouldn't have been able to do. That's a, it sounds like a problem. But that's why that's why the first thing Let's say I don't know if, I don't I don't know the history, but let's say not everyone in the town could write. There were a few people that could write, and then someone would say, "I I recognize the signature. I come from that town. I, he was the only one. He wrote all the documents for the town, so I can understand. Like, I recognize the signature, but so you'd show me the signature unless I, I I was reading this. Well, the truth is is that they didn't have printing, so if they were reading something, someone had 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 to have written it. So you would be much more uh, aware of someone's handwriting and signature and it would have been clear. Okay. Tanur Abanan, start in the Braise. If there's some testimony that someone knows, he's allowed to write it in a document. And then later on, when he has to testify about it, he reminds himself from what he had written. Okay. Ravuna says, not really he has to remember it on his own he can't just read it from the document Rabbi Yechanan says that even if he doesn't remember it he, he has to remember it even according to Rabbi Yechanan after he reads it but he's allowed to have forgotten it entirely until he read it we see from Rabbi Yechanan Hani Beit Shred the Adi Sadusa there's these two fellas. They know, or they had, they had known uh, some testimony. One of them had forgotten what his the testimony was. His friend can remind him. Don't you remember? You remember what happened? And that's good enough, according to Rabbi Yechanan, because when the friend reminds him, he remembers. 
Atzmei What happens if the um, the Baldin, it's Baldin, the uh, the the litigant uh, reminds the witness of what happened? Don't you remember this and that? Is that acceptable, or is it only if the other witness reminds him? Can the reminding come from the uh, the litigant? Huh? Leading the witness, right? So, I think they have examples of they tell people things and they claim they remember and it, it, they know that it wasn't true at all. So, uh, so Rav Chaviva, Marafilo Atzmei, Rav Chaviva says yes, he can remind him also. Marbrei de Ravashi Amar Atzmei Lai. Marbrei Ravashi says no, he can't. He just can't um, remind him of what took place. The Hilcha said the rule is Atzmei Lai that he can't, can't remind him. However, Vitzuver Merabonanu. But if the witness is two interpretations to this Gemara, but let's say the witness is a is a Torah sage, a Torah student, sounds like Tzurva Meraban, sounds like a yeshiva student, right? A filo atzmai, then the wit, then the litigant can remind him. And the the reason for this is, is because he doesn't get, um, he doesn't just follow along, you know, he studies uh, this the. In the yeshivas, they don't believe. It's very hard to to, to talk to a yeshiva bachar. I mean, it's like someone that learned. They don't believe anything you say. They, they tell you like, um, you know, I don't know if what you're saying is true. I'll do you a favor. I'll believe you. Okay, go on. You know, like the, very difficult. To... <laughs> so here, the 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 person's going to tell him, don't you remember this and that? He's going to say right away. He says, "Maybe I remember, or maybe you're telling me now, and I think I remember." I don't. I don't know. You know, it's more uh, uh, critical about. Okay, Kihada Ravashi, have you deal with Sadusa or Rav Kana? Ravashi, he knew testimony about Rav Kana. Usually, Ravashi has like great respect for Rav Kana, and it's usually Ravashi saying about Rav Kana that I saw Rav Kana this. Now it looks like it's going the other way. Um, Ravashi had some testimony about Rav Kana. Amr Lay, Rav Kana tells him, Yidacher Mar, does the master remember Hai Sadusa, this testimony? Amr Lay Lay, he says, I don't remember. Balav Hachi Vachi Avi, wasn't it such and such? Don't you remember? Amr Lay Lay Yadani says, I don't know. We'll say Fitka Ravashi. Then Ravashi remembered. Asad Lay, and he goes and testifies. Chazil Rav Kana, Davim Mechasim. He sees that Rav Kahana is hesitating because he didn't remember the first time. Now he's coming in and he's testifying. He was uh, he was surprised that this that this was taking place. A Malay. So Ravashi tells him, You think I'm relying on you? I know the Ramian of Shaivitkari. I reminded myself. Okay. You see that the Baldin, the litigant, can actually say something or whatever and re- remind the, the, the witness. Or maybe what he's saying is that I, you didn't remind me at all. Maybe that's what he's saying. You didn't remind me at all. I remembered on my own. Tanan Hasim, okay. Because we spoke about remembering, now we go into another topic. Um, this has to do with impurity, with the burial of um, possibly a, a, a miscarriage or a limb. We're asking if, uh, we're discussing here, if people would know if this burial took place, how long people would remember if they see a little mound somewhere off the side of the road, if that was, if people would know about it. So Tanan Hasim was taught over there in Sefus Alis. It says, Hatlulayis. Hatlulayis is, t- is a tail, it's a little mound, a heap. Hakrevis, Bain Le'ir, Bain Le'derech. It's next to the city or it's next to the road. Echad Chadash is Vechad Yishanis. Whether it's new or old, Timaeus. Because what's that heap doing there? Someone must have buried some of that pile of uh, dirt. So it must have buried uh, something under it. For a chaykes, if it's far away from the city or from the road, then chadash is if it's new to Hyrus. We would have known about it. So we say it's tar. But Yishana is it's old, then Timaeus. We wouldn't have known what happened over there. So we say that it's Tami. Is we crave what's considered close? Yeah, a little... Uh, yeah. Apparently... Um, Chadashis means that we that it wasn't here before and now it's here. 
Yeah. So how close is it? You know, if a woman had a miscarriage, she would want to bury the uh, the fetus. It wouldn't make a huge funeral. She would go privately and, and bury it somewhere. But the um, but, uh, question is, how far would she go alone to do that? And we're talking about things that we don't know about. If the city knows about it, then they know that this is a... So we're thinking that maybe within 50 amas, Hamisha Mama, maybe she buried something like this. It normally would. But um, if you don't know, you know, whatever. Yeah. There's another uh, thing that is possible that it came from someone that was losing his uh, limbs from gangrene or something. I mean, if he would bury a uh, um, one of his limbs. <laughs> well, we don't know what he lost with his left hand. So, um, if he lost the limb, it's metama boil. Aver menachai, I think is metama. That's the rule. It's metama like aver menames. Yeah, the, a limb of a uh, a living person is is uh, it's contaminating. Veizu yeshana. What's considered an old burial? Well, shishim shana, sixty years. If it was here for the last sixty years, then we don't know what was there before. We can't say anything about it. Divrei Meir, Rabbi Yudai Makreva. What does it mean? Close. <coughs> There's no mound that's closer than that because we think that maybe she would have buried in the cl in the closer mound. Yishana, what's the old one? Sheina the that no one remembers. What we're doing here is we're talking about how long a person remembers things. So we we're saying, well, sixty years was one of the uh, my ear, my derech. What are you telling me about a city and about a road? ear, mamish derech, derech mamish. If you're telling me that there was close to the city or close to the road, really? Are you just going to tell me you don't know why this mound is here and you're just going to tell me that it's Tame? So they found a it's like some uh, excuse of some sort that they wanted to make Eretz Yisrael tar, not Tame. Why was the mound there? They said, well, it was there for some other reason or whatever. Okay, Amar Abzeris or Abzeri answers to this ear, ear asmuchla beis The issue here is that it's a city that's close to the cemetery. And what would happen was, oh, let's see in a second, the derech derech beis And the road was the road to the cemetery. Bishlam the derech beis akvaris. We didn't get what happened by the beis akvaris. What was that? It was on the way to the cemetery, and there's a mound on the side. Well, the zimnim nesrami bein ashmashes, it was getting late, and it was almost Shabbos. So a Mikri cover Batel, they said, okay, we can't make it there. It's going to be too long. So they buried it right there on next to the cemetery on the road on the way. Why didn't they go to the basic forest if it's a city next to the cemetery? We're talking about this woman that's burying her her uh the miscarriage, she doesn't want to walk alone to the cemetery. So she'll go alone somewhere and she'll bury it. But if it's more than 50 amas away, then she's not going to go alone anyway. So she's going to have to get someone else. When she has someone else that goes with her, then she's going to already go to the cemetery. Therefore, only if it's within 50 amas will we say that it's Tame. But if it's outside of 50 amas, outside the city, then we would say that um, they went to the cemetery and it's not them. Amr of Chizda, just to say, Shmami Nami Reb Meir. We see from Reb Meir, Reb Meir said 60 years, Hai Sadusa, the testimony, Ad Shitin Shnin Midkar, a person will remember for 60 years. How long will they uh, allow testimony in, the, in America? Yeah. Also, something that's 60 years old is so changed by time and overgrown. Oh. oh, yeah, that's another issue. Right. Right. But maybe, it could, yeah, okay. Right. Right. But Tfei Midkar, more than that, they won't, but the statute of limitations because of memory, or there's other reasons for that. Must be other reasons for statute of limitations, not just memory. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. So here we're just dealing with memory. How long can a person come and testify? 
But uh, the Gemara says, Velahi, it's not true. Hasim Dalei Rami Over there, he was never, this, this um, testimony was never imposed on him. This is something that he needs to remember. It just happens to be, he would drive there on his way, you know, to work or whatever, he would pass by. So we think that after 60 years, he doesn't remember. But something that he was actually supposed to be remembering because he was saying, you know, witness this because you're a witness to this, uh, whatever, to the sale or something. Once it's imposed on him that he's supposed to be remembering it, then it would, could be even more than 60 years. We don't really have no proof from Reb Meir that 60 years is the limit. Let's leave it over here. Wow. Why do you need 